Alrighty, so hey everyone, how's it going? I am on the roof of my garage. I promised a look at my system. It is not 100% complete yet. There's a couple things I still have to do, but I figured that while well, I've got the time here and it's really nice out, I would go ahead and get a video for you. Um, I do want to say up front, everyone's needs and situation is different. So what may work for you may not work for me. Your financial wallet may be larger than mine, smaller than mine. The point is, is that my situation only allows me to do certain things. Your situation may only allow you to do certain things. You may live in an apartment. You might have 200 acres of bare land that you can work with. So um, I have been getting comments about some people saying, well, you know, they can't stop you from installing in your yard and they can't stop you. I, I get it. I understand what you're saying, but, um, you know, I signed the agreement saying that I would do a certain thing. And actually, I'm actually grandfathered into an old, um, like, uh, agreement, basically, that I could even have these all together. So I'm fortunate for that. But my situation currently is that I'm basically limited on what I can do. So this is what I came up with, and this is basically what um, what I'm currently happy with. And, you know, when I do get that piece of property, hopefully within a few years, then yes, I can do whatever the hell I want. But for now, this is the way that it is. Anyway, now that that's out of the way, here is my current setup. I'm actually going to be adding eight more panels to this, but this is 2.4 kilowatts of solar and it is completely off the grid it is not grid tied so we are completely off the grid this is 2.4 kilowatts these each of these panels are 100 watts each they are grape solar um, polycrystalline panels and they work really really well the build quality on these things is absolutely outstanding it just is is phenomenal and so I ended up uh, purchasing these. This uh, grape solar was actually my very first um, uh, panel that I had ever purchased. And I was looking for something that was American-made quality and has an extensive warranty. I do know that there are other solar panels out there made by different manufacturers who have the same warranty and their build quality is excellent. I get it. But I have had nothing but luck. I've actually had to return to Grape Solar one of my panels that was not functioning properly. They took it without question and replaced it. Um, and so I've been really, really happy with the company. And the price per kilowatt has been coming down. Um, I've been able to get these panels for roughly about uh, 80 cents uh, for a watt approximately and I know going with 280 or 235 watt panels it'll bring that price down per watt but again my situation here is that I cannot put those kind of panels up there um, so this is what I have to deal with fortunately I've already invested in grape solar so I've been really really happy with this and it gives me the flexibility to be able to build something like this and be able to fit it on my garage and it look actually pretty decent so Anyways, um, yeah, so these are Grape Solar 100 watt panels, polycrystalline. So in order to get these to stay here um, on the roof, what I actually did previously was I had a system that ran kind of this way. And you'll see some pictures or maybe some old videos. I had a system that ran this way, single file, and it was 24 volts, and I had one on the other side. So I had an eastern exposure, which is this side, and then a western exposure, which is this side. And it worked pretty well. I mean, I didn't really have any problems with it, but it was very limited in what it could actually do, obviously. Um, so what I decided to do, what I learned from last winter, was that basically the pitch of the roof does not allow me to get very much in the way of um, the off-season sun, and that is the winter sun. So what I did was I built a rack, which you guys saw the rack in a previous video. Built it out of wood, pressure-treated wood, so it would be good for being out in the elements, and I ended up building this um, system here to mount these at a 45-degree angle. 
The reason I did that is because I would be able to get at least, you know, six, 700 watts or so of solar, even in the dead of winter off of these panels here. Whereas previously they were flat like this and I was getting hardly anything. Again, my situation is that this is my limitation. So what I did was I mounted eight of these panels and they are in 48 volts. Um, I mounted eight of these panels so that I could at least get some fall and spring sun to be able to stay as much off the grid as absolutely possible. So that's how I did it. Now, in times like this, where the sun is way, way up in the sky like that because it is almost summer solstice, these are not running as much solar as they would say in early May or April. And um, so, you know, that is the trade-off. That is what you get. But overall, over the year, based on my situation, I'll actually improve the situation because I'll be able to maintain more output throughout the year and even in the dead of winter I will still have a fair amount of solar coming in. So with that in mind I went ahead and built these um, stands knowing about structural stability and we we had a really we had a really bad storm here uh, a couple weeks back and the wind was terrible and I stood out here and I watched from the door and these did not move an inch so they're structurally sound um, basically what I did with them is they are bolted with 8 inch bolts directly to the studs, um, the, the trusses that run across the garage. So that's what they're mounted to, that's what holds them in place. And then obviously I used a lot of um, 4 and a half inch uh, screws to put everything else together. And this thing is absolutely solid, it does not move. Trust me when I say it does not move at all. And of course for my diagonal support to make sure that the, it doesn't want to shift back and forth this way because it is at a, at a uh, decline. Um, you've got this brace that comes around here and it kind of acts as your diagonal support, which it does a, an excellent job. This is identical to the other side of the garage over there. And these actually get more sun than you would actually think that they would even though they're pitched a little bit differently once the sun starts coming up pretty much all of these panels because they are above the um you know the the peak of the garage pretty much all of these panels receive sunlight so it has been pretty good now of course on the panels i've got um you know bare copper wire this is um eight and I'm told, you know, I've already talked about this before, I'm told that some people say you must have a minimum of six, but this seems to be doing just fine based on the size. It's, it's perfect. Um, and the entire setup, the entire everything, these are all connected together. They will be. I've got some more copper wire over there that I have to um, install, but they all run down to two ground rods there's one right there and then i've got one over there that i've got marked with um so i don't run it over the lawnmower um but uh yeah so they are um two ground rods those are about eight feet apart approximately eight or nine feet they must be at least six feet apart to be effective those are about uh, eight and a half feet or so apart so the entire system is grounded to earth down there and then obviously it's grounded to the combiner box which i'll show you here in a little bit but uh so yeah uh, so i've got three bolts that run down on each side so six in total that are holding it in place and then for the panels that lay flat because obviously i would be blocking the sun if i took these and laid them up at a 45 they would block these panels here these are completely flat so they will not obstruct the sun even in the dead of winter um, for those, I just have a couple of 2x4s by 12 feet that are running down, and they pretty much are absolutely perfect for the stretch. Um, got a couple of 2x4s that actually mount the panels to these Z brackets, by the way. These Z brackets, um, I got these for pretty cheap. But there's a, they're about $10 a set. Um, not too bad when you actually think about how they're aluminum and they're really well built. Um, and they, they obviously mount, I had to make my own holes to mount it because the 2x4 wasn't quite um, tall enough to be able to use the existing holes, so I ended up making my own, and that works out just fine. These are really strong, they don't go anywhere, so I'm not worried about them flying off of the wood or anything else like that. 
and uh so yeah that obviously um for this particular one these uh, z brackets they they run to the two by fours just like these that are at a 45 except for underneath you can probably see where i basically just have a two by four that's laying flat on the um on the garage and it's bolted to the trusses just like those over there same exact thing for that side over there um and then i have basically have another set over here um these these went off a little bit and i don't know why um, they are off a little bit, but the thing is, is the panels, believe it or not, and I couldn't figure out why, the panel hole location is actually different for some of these panels. And I, I don't know why, because on their website, it doesn't say there's any difference. So some of these brackets, um, and th this is identical spacing. This here is identical spacing. I didn't mess up the measurements or anything else like that, but you can see where this bracket over here is way off compared to that one over there that's not way off and it's because of the location of the mounting hole that's on the underside and I can't figure out why that's the case so when I set all these up and then I laid the panels down I said what the heck why is that so far off it doesn't matter because it's still going to hold it in place I'm not worried about wind blowing it off or anything or ripping it out of there they're pretty strong so um, and they offer the uh, the lateral support you can see where they offer really nice lateral support so that the panels won't shift back and forth it's pretty cool actually um, these are really nice um, brackets and I've been more than happy with them grape solar actually sells brackets but they're about three or four times the price and I accidentally ordered a set and I think I paid oh, like 18 or 19 bucks just for one panel and uh, the the quality is outstanding they give you a ton of hardware but they only give you one set and with you know the the ones that i bought on amazon they come with a set of four per pack for but it was like 22 or 23 dollars for a set of four so that's what i ended up going with because it was actually a better price and then i accidentally ordered some grape solar ones which again quality outstanding much thicker than these but also much more expensive so <clears throat> these are more than adequate of course ground wire i still have these panels here to ground out real quick um actually i got the uh the bare copper wire right there i'm kind of working on that right now and um this is the set that i just recently put up just um just today you can see that i haven't even put it in any snake uh skin yet um but um so yeah so this is uh all the uh, the panels they run to this combiner box right here and uh, I've shown you a little bit about this combiner box now you can see the inside and exactly how I've got it set up I kind of worked with what I had previously and then I added some stuff to it I still have some um, some red electrical tape to add to the the positives of the the wire here um, you know obviously to uh, to differentiate for safety reasons differentiate between the positive and the negative um, but it's uh, it's a really really nice um, uh, combiner box I've been really really happy with it this is a split array so array number one which is here is actually the eastern array here and then array number two which is split from array number one is actually the the western array and uh, so they're split in half ground fault protection on each side as well as lightning arresters on each side here and um yeah so it's been uh, it's been actually a pleasure hooking this up they're they're really good quality um i've got uh, 15 amp midnight solar dc breakers for each um, set of four panels they shouldn't put out more than about six amps so that's plenty um, 15 amps seems to be a pretty good number that's what I had previously so I know some people use 10 amp um, for 48 volts which is fine but I already had all these 15 amps so I decided to go ahead and use them again um, and then of course the ground fault protection which is 63 amps per array which is connected to your equipment ground which goes straight to uh, earth ground and that's what the lightning arresters rely on is having your earth ground to make sure that any of that energy would be transferred then to the ground and whatever's not obviously would uh, be taken care of by the lightning arrestor whether or not they work who knows until you have a lightning strike um but uh, you know they are there and uh, 
So hopefully they will come in handy when the time comes. So anyway, uh, that solar panel up there is actually for one of my security cameras. It has nothing to do with this. But um, I've got some strain reliefs. Um, these are midnight solar strain reliefs. They're really nice, but they're kind of pricey. But I wanted something that was going to be, um, you know, weather sealed as well as take the strain off of the wires. That's what I wanted. So I ended up buying um, a whole bunch of these. I got a whole bag of them here. Um, more than I thought I was going to need. Um, I just bought a bunch of them just because. And uh, so, yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, the system is fully online right now. And uh, I've got the air conditioning on in the house. It's running. The batteries are still at float. These panels are more than capable of running the air. Uh, so that's what I've got going on now. I do have room, as you can see, where I can expand and add two more sets of panels on each array. Actually, one set on each array, so two sets total. And that is what I'm planning on doing. So I have just enough room here on the garage to be able to add that. Now, the downside to that is that the house itself, the roof of the house, is going to block some of this sun when the sun is at its lowest point and i actually took when you know when um when winter was when it was december 21st um i actually looked and the sun from the roof actually stops at about right here at its lowest point assuming there's no snow or anything else on the roof so roughly about a quarter of the panels on this side and that side will be blocked in December, which means the voltage is going to be much lower than 48 volts. And so they will likely be pretty much useless. Now it does at, you know, in about, it was about the early, the first week in February is when the sun came back and actually started hitting this um, uh, combiner box, which means it will be obviously clear. And I won't have to worry about, um, you know, from the first week in February on, I won't have to worry about anything blocking this set of panels. Again, you work with what you can work with, and that's what I can work with. So for about 10 months out of the year, these two sets that are here will be working perfectly fine. And there's about two months out of the year, a little less maybe, where I'm going to have, uh, you know, I'm going to basically have two sets that are going to be totally useless. And, you know, I've thought about raising them up, but the problem is, is they're going to block that. And I really don't want, I want these as flush as possible. Um, so, again, you work with what you work with and what you've got. And that's what I've got. So, uh, more than happy. Um, let's go ahead and we'll head inside and I'll show you what they're actually doing right now. And the sun is at the absolute top of the sky right now. So, this is perfect. All right, so I'm wrong. The sun isn't actually at its uh, apex yet. It's almost there. But um, if you look at these two charge controllers here, you'll see that one array, which is my eastern array, is doing about uh, almost a kilowatt out. Um, and it is a 1.2 kilowatt array. And then my western array is putting out only about 200, looks like 250 watts. But here's the thing with that is this represents your load this represents the load on what you could consider to be kind of like the ac side load okay so this array here these two arrays should put out about equal amounts when the sun is at the top of the sky um, obviously the eastern array is going to be more when the sun is rising and the western array is going to be more when the sun is setting so the sun starts to set you know, and obviously what you would consider high noon, and the sun is rising until that point. So this array is always gonna do better during sunrise, and this array is always gonna do better during sunset. But right now, what you're seeing here is you're seeing that I'm actually only consuming about, looks like almost 1.3 kilowatts of an actual load from the solar panels themselves. The, uh, the air conditioning is on right now, but it's not consuming that much. I think the compressor's off. There it goes. Okay, so now you can see the air conditioning compressor just kicked on. And now you can see that both arrays are now pretty much maxed out. Um, that's, what, about 2 kilowatts approximately. We'll say around 2 kilowatts. 
Um, so the air conditioning did kick on and now these panels are pumping. You can probably hear the fans on the inverter ended up uh, getting pretty slow, or they slowed down. The reason is because the battery voltage for that time ended up falling to be able to handle the load. But you can see that it's still staying pretty much steady at a 53 point, we'll say 53.4. It's, it's probably going to fall a little bit more, but that's still well above, um, you know, your uh, uh, the safety limit considering that kind of load on the inverter and it's still able to stay well above the 13 volts that uh, that I'm looking for per battery um, so it's um it's working out great it really is now you can see these panels are really chugging hard they're doing their absolute best and you can tell obviously the Sun is not at the top of the sky because this one is doing what 980 watts and then this one is doing 920 watts this number and I've seen it this number will start to rise as we get closer to what is considered high noon and then this number will stay more steady as the sun starts to fall whereas this number will definitely taper off and begin to fall faster so um, but still they do a really good job uh, so I've been more than happy um, yes it is completely and totally off the grid um, this inverter is running everything so I've been really really happy um, these Make Sky Blue controllers, these are the 60 amp versions. These were given to me by Make Sky Blue. They have a representative here in the States out of Oklahoma. His name is Sean Buckner. He is pretty much the sales service support. He repairs these, he updates their software, does all sorts of things. He generously donated these two to me, and uh, I've been more than happy with them. I've absolutely been more than happy with them. Um, I should say that you guys have seen the basics of this, but these are two 100 watt uh, DC circuit breakers that come in from both sets, both panels. So both arrays come in actually through here and then out through here, which goes into each charge controller here at this end. This wire I still have to tidy up, but I wanted to finish the array before I did all this stuff just to make sure. This bus bar down here I actually stole from PowerJack, don't tell them. actually. And really steal it i'm borrowing it but um that's my ground uh bus bar my terminal so to speak a terminal block for my ground because the wiring on this is way too 